Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF.com Formulator Race of the Day for Friday, October the 27th, race number six at Belmont Park. Let's take a peek at this field. We're going six furlongs on the Inner Turf New York Bread Optional Claiming Event. Head on over to the Race of the Day event page on DRF.com, download your free Formulator Pass performances and handicap along with us as we take this field in post position order. Mike, the number one barrier to entry you just can't trust. He's two for 39 lifetime. We'd hoped when, when Linda Rice took this horse over, yeah. maybe Linda would be able to turn her around. And it looked like perhaps it was going to happen. First time Linda, a winner, and then barrier to entry just got back to her old ways. What did you think of the ride last time out? Arad Ortiz had this horse on the lead, battling mm -hmm. it out with the Pletcher horse we'll talk about in a minute. And then I thought it's sort of a, an odd juncture. He wrangled this horse back into the pocket. Now, it worked out. When yeah. the rail opened up, he shot on through. I thought you should go on with it. Maybe. I can't argue with the with the trip she wound up getting, though, because she had a fair chance at it through the stretch, and she just did what she always what she always does. I mean, um, you're right in that she's just, you can't really trust her um, from a win bet perspective. Well, of course. She just doesn't win, but you can trust her to show up and run her race because she will show up and run it every time. It's just, it's getting to the point now where I just don't think you want to bet her on top anymore. Of course, this race kicks off the pick four. Would you even use her defensively? Um, when I use her defensively, maybe. It depends on how the other legs play out. Just because I know that she can win. She is clearly good enough to win this race. And I also feel like six is better than seven. They went to seven with their last time. I think six is better. Um, but boy, she's awful tough to have a lot of money in on the win end. Timeform U.S. Pace Projector has her on or near the lead. The number one, that of course being a barrier to entry. It doesn't look like there's going to be a blazing pace. Do you think no. IRAD's going to go? I think there is actually more pace than Timeform U.S. thinks. And I think she'll try to opt for that similar pocket trip as last time. I think I'll ride her the same way. Come out of there running, get her forward because that's where she likes to be. And then maybe take up that tracking position in behind just like she did last time. Moon Dance Joy, the number two who we have far back in the pace projector this mare would really benefit from a good pace up front I think she's more of a dirt mare I know she has one on turf in the past but we have some form questions to aggress as well as surface yeah I mean she's run some okay races on turf but she's probably better on dirt and she's not quite as good as she was in the past either I just wonder where she is form wise she's back on seven days here and the scene is main track only queen of spades the number four pace pressing winner at a big price last time out 22 to 1 race hasn't really done much yeah. yet. The ninth place finisher came back to buy her 75 next time out. She's been freshened up from that race. She adds some pace to the party. Yeah, I think she'll probably try and get forward. I know she stepped up and won last time. I'm with you. I don't really like that race that much. I think this is a way tougher spot for her. Should be close to the pace along with True Charm, who won at Saratoga this summer, going five and a half. Since then, things haven't gone exactly right. Uh, she finished behind La Montagna last time out in an open 40. That horse came back to run second with an 83 buyer. You like this yeah. horse a little bit. Yeah, well, it's just, if only because she has speed, and I do feel like she, I feel like she can make the lead in this race. I, I feel like Paco Lopez will probably just faster send than her. Before. And I think she's faster than that horse. I think she can make the front in this race. That can make her dangerous. You know, it's funny when you start picking apart her PPs because she's run really well in just about all of her turf races. Um, she doesn't finish that well in her races, so the six furlongs really worries me. I think she's better at five and a half. Um, where she won at Saratoga a few starts ago. Um, and the other thing that you just have to think really, you have to really respect about her is um, she faced a better field last time of open 40s, as you mentioned. She faced a way better field two starts back. And then when you get those class, two yeah. races out of the way, I mean, her form against these kinds of horses is really solid. And she'll be a very good price. Unrepented, it's nice to see her back in the races because she's a hard hitter. She's yeah. won 10 of 39 with nine seconds and six thirds. But she's been away since March. And we have a negative formulator fact for her. Fantastic trainer, Chris Engelhart. Dirt to turf just hasn't been a good move yeah. for this barn. 4% over the past five years. 55 cent return on investment. This to me just looks like let's get a comeback race mm -hmm. into her and move on to Aqueduct in the winter, maybe on dirt. Yeah, that's right. The the formulator fact that we put up there is a bad one. Um, if you want a good formulator fact for Chris Engelhart, go look up second off the layoff turf to dirt, because that's a good uh, angle for Engelhart, and that's what it looks like he's doing here with this horse. Todd Pletcher has the seven, driven by speed. I think she's kind of a need-the-lead type, Mike, and I I'm not too. sure she's going to make the lead in here. Now, her post position gives John Velasquez plenty of options. If the four and a five go out there, there's a good chance that this horse will be sitting in that perfect three-wide tracking trip. Yeah. Right now, she hasn't proven to me that she can pass a parked car. Uh, when barrier to entry left her alone on the turn last time out, I thought that gave this I horse agree. a little bit of an advantage, and, and she just couldn't seal the deal. You think turning back to six will help? Maybe it will. I, 
I think this horse is a pretty tough call in this race. Her first two turf starts I thought were fine. She obviously won both of them. I didn't think they were great. I thought they were fine. I don't really like her last two starts, in particular the last one. I mean, I don't know what her excuse would really be <laughs> in that race last time. I don't know that she makes the front uh, over uh, True Charm. I always get her confused with another horse. I don't know if she makes the front over that horse or not, and if she doesn't, I don't know if I really want this horse trying to pass horses. If you don't like the five horses coming out of that barrier to entry race on October the 4th, one of the logical alternatives is Munchkin Money for Brian Lynch, a horse that won turning back to seven furlongs last time out. She got a very nice trip tracking Perfect. the pace, but then she kind of blew that field away as she was supposed to do as the favorite. Yep. She got a figure. I think the pace will be solid. She'll be sitting in mid-pack, a little bit further back, yep. but she's proven she can pass. Do you think the six is too short for her? I wonder. I don't really love these horses cutting back, but she cut back to seven last time, so it gives you a little bit of hope. Um, her two wins that surround the, the two losses there up at Saratoga Beautiful are no longer trips. perfect trips both times, but she really ran both times, too. Um, she's facing better horses here than she faced last time. I think one of the things you always want to keep in mind, and I don't know if she wants six or not. Maybe it won't be a problem, um, but the one thing you have to worry about with her is she's taken, this is a big jump, from the 1X yes. New York Reds to the 2X New York Reds is a huge jump in collection. You can just look at any one of these fillies and mares who have been running and tried to take that jump, and it takes them forever to win. This is a really big step up in class for the source. Can't you make the argument that the horse you're supposed to take out of that October the 4th race is Ella Weasel? Not only did she finish ahead of four of the other horses, but she had the worst trip by far. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly how I looked at the race, and that's why I picked her in this race, and that's who I will take in here, just to give her one more chance. Um, I do think she's you know, clearly good enough to beat these horses if she gets the right trip in this race, and she certainly didn't get that last time. She was just in and among on yeah. the turn. It took her forever to get out to split horses, and once she did, she fired in the stretch. You and I have always had a thing for this yeah. horse, and maybe now the blinkers are coming on for Pat Kelly, and uh, third start blinkers, she can get it done. First appeal looked like she was on her way. She won four or five going into her most recent start, and I have no idea what happened. Yeah, she just didn't fire at all last time. Now, she was making that clash jump we already talked about from the one next to the 2X, and she just never did any running at all in that race. She's got some pretty good back races um, to get to, and she'll come running at the end. If she catches a pace, if these horses, for some reason, go at it early, I think she'll run late in this race, but she was pretty disappointing last time. Pick time for the Friday Formulator Race of the Day. You're going with Ella Weasel, who had the trip last time yeah. out, finishing ahead of several of these horses. You're terrifying me with this whole angle thing of stepping up in class. It's a very legitimate one. I just, you know... It, I agree that Ella Weasel's the one to take out of that race. If I'm playing the pick four, I'm leaning mostly on the eight and the nine. Yeah. But I just think maybe Munchkin Money found the right 2X and might get the she right setup. But I don't want to take anything short to, to win on her. I think she's five to two on the morning line, sure. and that might be a little bit too short for me. Uh, Mike's going nine, five, one, and eight. I'm going eight, nine, one, and seven in our formulator race of the day. If you're playing the Friday Belmont card from home, please sign up to DRF Bets. You'll immediately access a $300 sign-up bonus just by going to drf.com forward slash fall using the promo code fall300 and signing up to DRF Bets. Approximate post time for the 6th at Belmont on Friday, 340 Eastern. Good luck.